for dear students or today we'll see what do we mean by pick and place robot so here is the today's topic which is called as pick and place robot now this is a robot which is going to pick a object from a location and it is going to place that same object on another desired location now for all this the basic or components whatever we have studied about robot like your manipulator arm your end effector a gripper actuator sensor controller all these terms will be used while speaking about the working of pick and place robot or the construction of pick and place robot okay now basically pick and place means it is going to pick an object from one location and then it is going to place the same object on a, another desired location so here if you are going to see the definition of pick and place robot a pick and place robot is one which is used to pick up an object and place it in the desired location this is very clear this is a very simple this is the basic meaning of the name itself what is called as pick and place it can be a cylindrical robot providing movement in horizontal or vertical and rotational axis it can be a spherical robot providing two rotational and one linear movement it can be an articulate robot or a scara robot which is a fixed robots with three vertical axis rotary arms so depending upon your application how many arms you want how many movements you want what are the movements you want from where you want to pick the object where you want to place the object all these things your application will decide what kind of structure or what kind of feature your robot has to be but its basic work will be picking an object and placing the same object on another location so here you can see a image of pick and place robots so here we have shown these are the objects which are placed down so here you can see these are the objects now these objects are to be picked by the robot and placed on another location so here you can see this is your manipulator arm this is you can call this as manipulator arm okay and here you can have your end effector so here you can have your end effector okay and that will give you the a gripper here so here you are going to grip grip the object you are going to pick it you are going to hold it and then you are going to place it by the movement of this manipulator arm so there will be a rotary joint here there will be a rotary joint here okay so and there will be a joint here so all these joints will see that what kind of freedom of movement you have to do for that particular part how much it has to move what is the angle of movement what is the location from where it is going to pick the object what is the location where it is going to place the object okay so all these things will matter on the same lines we will see a video over here so here you can see this is the arm which is shown it is picking the objects and placing them so here you can see it is picking the appropriate objects and placing it on another location so this moment is nothing but your simple pick and place moment okay so here in this picture now at present you are able to see the end effect of the last part where it is gripping the object and displacing so it is picking and placing that is only the basic uh, work here but in this video now at present you are seeing only the end effect now you can see the manipulate the arm okay on top and also the end effect so from this view you can see that how it is placing and then whatever rotary joints you require at various stages which has to rotate in a particular angle at a particular freedom of uh, movement okay so all that can be seen from this video so here if you go to see the parts of pick and place robot it will be same like your uh, components of a robot the first part we have named here as a rover rover is nothing but your manipulator so whatever manipulator we have studied in the parts of robot that only will be called as rover it is the main body of the robot consisting of several rigid bodies like a cylinder or a spear joints and links it is also known as a manipulator okay so this is the main arm then you have a end effector at the end of that arm where you are going to grip the particular object 
So it is the body connected to the last joint of the rower that is the manipulator which is used for the purpose of gripping or handling objects. It can be analogy, it can be same as the arm of a human being. Then third you see what are actuators. They are the drivers of the robot. The actually actuates, it actually actuates the robot. It can be any motor like servo motor or stepper motor or pneumatic or hydraulic cylinders. Anything which will give you a movement which can be a rotational moment, which can be a circular moment, which can be a linear moment. Whatever moment you want, that moment you will get for that particular application by the actuator when it gets its command from the controller. Then you have sensors. These are the input devices. So sensors are going to give the input signal to the controller. They are used to sense the internal as well as the external state to make sure that the robot functions smoothly as a whole. So we have studied earlier also internal state sensors which will give the internal status of the robot and external state sensors which will give the external environment status. So both these type of sensors are going to work for the complete robot function. Sensors involve touch sensors, infrared sensors, etc. Then fifth one, it's a very important unit here which is called as a controller. So this a controller will be your a processor which is going to process the input signals what it gets from the sensors and the algorithms whatever are there in that whatever software is there whatever programs are there based on that it is going to execute and then finally come out with a command which it gives to the actuator and then the actuator will make the task complete okay so here if you see the a controller it is used to a control the actuators based on the sensor feedback and thus control the motion of each and every joint and eventually the moment of the end. So uh, this is the explanation of the units of pick and place robot. Okay, this will be the structure and the units. These are the uh, components of your pick and place robot. Then we'll see how does a pick and place robot work. Now we know the basic function of a pick and place robot is done by its joints because same like uh, human joints even the robot has to have joints for this application of pick and place so joints are analogous to human joints and are used to join the two consecutive rigid bodies in the robot they can be rotary joint or linear joint they can move circularly rotary or they can move straight linearly okay to add a joint to any link of a robot we need to know about the degrees of freedom and degrees of movement so how much that particular part can move okay for that part so degrees of freedom implement the linear and rotational movement of the body and degrees of movement imply the number of axes the body can move then if you go to see a simple diagram of a pick and place robot you can draw this diagram so here you can see you are having a rigid body this is the rigid body number one so here we have named it this as rigid body number one and here you can have rigid body number two this is your rigid body number two these are going to only move and the movement of those bodies are going to be done by this rotary joints these are your rotary joints rotary joints now these joints are going to move those rigid bodies so here also you can see a rotary joint this is also a rotary joint okay and and the end here which is going to grip the objects is called as end effector okay now this uh, arrangement is placed on a base this is your base okay and this is a moving base because it is having wheels below it so that from one location you can pick an object and then this will move and then the arm will place that object on another location Okay, so this is how a simple diagram you can draw for pick and place object. Then a simple pick and place robot consists of two rigid bodies on a moving base connected together with rotary joint. A rotary joint is one which provides rotation in 360 degrees around any one of the axes. The bottom or the base is attached with wheels which provide linear movement. The first rigid body is fixed as we have seen in the diagram and supports the second rigid body to which the end effector is provided. The second rigid body is provided with movement in all the three axes and has three degrees of freedom. 
it is connected to the first body with a rotational joint the end effector should accommodate all six degrees of freedom whatever we have studied six degrees of freedom uh, in straight movement and in rotational movement that is a transitional movement and rotational movement in order to reach these moments are there in order to reach all sides of the component to take up position at any height to any height the wheels underneath the base help to move the robot to the desired location the rigid body supporting the end effector bends or straightens up to reach the position where the object is placed the end effector picks up the object with a strong grip and places it at the desired position this is the basic work of your pick and place robot then if you go to see the advantages of this pick and place robot number one they are faster and can get the work done in seconds compared to their human counterparts number two they are flexible and have the appropriate design number three they are accurate number four they increase the safety of the working environment and actually never get tired then if you go to see the applications of pick and place so the applications a few are mentioned over here number one is defense application it can be used for surveillance and also to pick up harmful objects like bombs and diffuse them safety number two will be industrial applications these robots are used in manufacturing to pick up the required parts and place in the correct position to complete the machinery fixture as we have seen in the video shown it can also be used to place objects on the conveyor belt as well as pick up or defective products from the conveyor belt third application an important application you can see medical applications these robots can be used in various surgical operations like in joint replacement operations orthopedic and internal surgery operations it performs the operations with more precision and accuracy so these are a few of the important applications of pick and place robot okay thank you students